Now recently, I've been reviewing a lot of beginner sites and these are some of the most common mistakes that I see beginners make and also some pros. So stick around to the end to find something that I see absolutely everyone doing wrong. So the first thing that's pretty, pretty easy, I see this a lot, but it's, I mean, it's just, it's something that people need to get to get used to doing is people don't actually compress their images. So they get the images from a client or from Google, from Unsplash, whatever, and they drop it directly into the file. And then sometimes they have sites with files that have like three megabytes each. So then the page takes an eternity to download and that's just, it's not good for a SEO, it's not good for the user experience. And so it's just not good in general. So you need to get used to going into tiny PNG or something like that and actually compressing your images down. Now, the second one is actually using the columns in Webflow. So Webflow gives you columns as an element that you can drop in and use, right? So you've got two columns that you can drop element one and element two, right? But the issue is that this is super hard to manage when you're scaling it down, when you're building it up. So what I recommend instead is using either div blocks. So you've got one larger div block and then two smaller div blocks inside, or just using a grid. So you can have a grid with two columns and one row and that's just that's basically the columns and it's easier to scale down it's easier to convert into just one column and two rows and it's not it's not a big hassle as the columns are now the third one is something that i don't even think people know that it's a problem but it definitely is it's forgetting your values and lower breakpoints so in webflow you're building down right you're building from the base breakpoint all the way down to mobile so sometimes you make a change in horizontal mobile or mobile and then you want to revert back to those changes so you go back into tablet or back into desktop and you change the pixel dimension but then you go and realize that in mobile, it's still the same exact size because you forgot to change it again, right? So you forgot to do command click and revert back to the default state or the default zero. And even if you type in zero, it'll still have that override in the lower breakpoint. So sometimes it's better just to click command and click on the actual number so that it can revert back to the default state. And that way, whenever you're building down, it'll always carry down the values, especially if you're building in REMs or percentages, you want those values to always go down, which again, if you're building in in percentages, but then you forgot something in pixels and then it's a whole mess and it's just better to be building down. You press option click on the numbers and it'll be an easier experience to build down. The next one is something I see a lot with beginners and not necessarily pros, but it's forgetting that classes carry over to different pages. So sometimes you wanna use a class, right? Say maybe div one and you accidentally use that for the second page or the third page that, that you're using this, this div block in. And then you change the margin, you change the padding to fit this one page, but you forget that it's on other pages. So then you end up changing changing the, the complete design and it's just a mess. And sometimes it's better just to add secondary classes or even change the class completely if you're building on different pages. That is especially if you don't want to change the dimensions of the original page, right? If that makes sense. So again, the remedy here is use two different classes or use secondary classes just to kind of differentiate those two. Now, the next one is actually not using classes in the first place. So it's extremely important to name all of your divs, all of your headings, everything, and have proper naming conventions for everything. Because when you want to go back and revise something or change something, that the client wants you to do, it's impossible to remember, oh, it was in div block maybe 36 or 35. That's impossible to remember. So you wanna be able to mention, okay, it was in top div before the breakpoint. It was top this before that. So it's super important to build correctly and to name all of your divs and all of your images correctly because again, using classes is a super powerful thing so you wanna be able to use that to your advantage. The next one is an extremely important one. So this one is making sure that you're using the proper text element when you're building out your site, right? Again, this is mostly for beginners, but so on the page, if you're building, let's say for example, a paragraph or a heading, then it's important to actually use the paragraph or heading element. You shouldn't be using a text block for the header or you shouldn't be using a text block for the paragraph if it's not the proper use. Now, one way to explain this is if I'm adding an H1 right here, then it shouldn't actually be a paragraph element element just with a bigger text font. It should actually be a heading element. That way when Google scans my site, it can actually see that this is a heading and not a paragraph. Now visually it might not matter to you and it might not really make any sense. Well, why does it matter if it's a text block or a paragraph? Well, again, it's just for SEO. It's super important for the search engine to be able to read your website. Now, another tip with naming conventions is actually naming your images. Now you might not have thought about this. I know a lot of people don't, it kind of skips over it when you're just building the site, but Google can actually see what the image that you're uploading is. It doesn't have eyes on the sheet like you do. So you need to be able to name it in some sort of way that Google will be able to read that. And in Webflow, they give you the ability to actually write a description of the image. And that way you can just explain easily what the image is like person snowboarding over mountain or image 
of someone skydiving or whatever it is, right? It's super easy to just write in and now Google knows that this is that image and not something completely different, which is not relevant to your website. Okay, there's two left here and these are some of the most important ones that I see absolutely everyone doing. And sometimes, I mean, it's a little bit embarrassing that I see some of the pros doing this as well. So the first one is adding the paddings or the margins or whatever it is to the child elements and not the actual parent elements. So if you're thinking about it as a section and then two divs and then maybe like an image inside, some people would add the margin or the padding on the image rather than the actual section. And off the top of your head, you might think, oh, well, what does it matter if it's just in the image and not the section? Well, if you want to be able to use that section in a scalable way and you want to be able to transfer it over to different sections and reuse it, then you can't actually do that if the padding and the margin is set on the image rather than the section, right? So you want to be able to just copy paste easily and carry on those assets onto the next section, which you can't do if, again, the margin and padding is on the wrong element. Now, the last one here is one of the most important ones that I see people skip over a lot and it's actually not checking the larger breakpoints. So if you'd see on Webflow, there are some larger breakpoints like 1440, 1920, things like that. And people sometimes just skip over them. They just use the base breakpoint. And sometimes it's fine if you're just using a fixed breakpoint and you don't want to actually have a much bigger site. But again, in terms of UX, it's super important to actually take those into consideration, especially if you have a client that checks on every breakpoint. I mean, that's happened to me before and I've completely missed it. So I'm also a victim of that. If you guys actually want to try Webflow, then make sure to use the link in the description because it will help out the channel. And if you guys do want to check out more Webflow videos, then make sure you watch this video right here or there, I'm not sure, and you check out the playlist for Webflow. Now, this has been a little bit of a different video to make, but I did enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, then let me know down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.